right, YouTube, this is going to be a very special video. This is my second um, Morgan dollar coin ring that I'm making. The first one was sent to me by Redneck Coin Rings on TikTok. I was just afraid to invest in it on myself. And he was like, I'll send you one. Go ahead and make it. Uh, see how it comes out. And this is how it came out. Absolutely awesome. Uh, I, I really, really like this ring. And so he liked it too. And because um, he liked it so much, he sent me another one to make a ring for him. So that's what I'm going to be doing today. We're going to be making a coin ring out of this Morgan Silver Dollar for Redneck Coin Rings on TikTok. So you guys go follow him if you're on TikTok and you like uh, Morgans. I haven't seen anybody who's uh, as a dedicated collector of Morgans uh, than him on TikTok. So definitely worth a follow. Uh, the first thing we're gonna need to do is punch a hole in the center of this coin. We're gonna be doing a 5 8 hole and we're gonna punch it with this press. So let me get this set up and we'll get started. All right, so I've got most everything set up here on the press. I went ahead and cracked this out of the slab it was in. And man, this coin is, it's just beautiful. Very nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and place this coin in here and it's pretty big. So I have to make sure it doesn't, it doesn't tilt over into the side of this. And we're going to tighten this top down. That's going to center it. And then we're going to put the punch in on top. Now, something I have noticed uh, since I started using this is that you shouldn't leave these punches in here after you're done using them. Because they will, or at least mine have, uh, rusted. Let me go ahead and grab that one. I left this one in there for about a week and it got all nasty and rusty. So just a little tip, uh, something I'm figuring out, don't leave those in there. And that probably depends on like your climate or where you live or whatever. And now we're gonna bring this jack down and I'm sorry, this take a moment. So let me bring it down, I'll be right back. Okay, so now I've got the press right above the punch. I've made sure everything's lined up and that there's a hole underneath it as well. So that punch has somewhere to go, and I put my hand underneath it to catch it as it drops. And this is a pretty thick coin, so when it, when it punches through, it's probably going to be loud. There we go. And there's our beautiful Morgan center punch. Look at that eagle. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna work this out of here and then we're gonna deburr the inside of this coin to make it nice and smooth. Looks pretty good and centered to me. All right, so the next step is what we're gonna do is if you look at the inside cut edge where we, we got rid of that center punch, it's actually quite sharp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this deburring tool and I'm gonna move around this inside edge until it's nice and smooth to the touch. Um, I'm gonna to speed up this part just because it's kind of hard to film and it, it takes a while. So, I'm gonna start speeding it up right now. All right, so we got this first inside edge nice and smooth here and you can really see the difference between that sharp drastic jagged punch and that smoother edge and that's going to reduce uh, the chances of this cracking or snapping as we work on it and it's going to make it more comfortable to wear uh, but we do need to go ahead and deburr this other side uh, I recommend when you do this to do it over something to collect the silver and I'm going to speed up the rest of this so we can get this done looks and feels pretty good to me. Uh, now we can go ahead and move on to annealing this. Um, what I like to do is I like to take an Expo marker and I'll mark four times on the coin. 
let that dry off and while I'm heating this up with the torch when those marks go away that's that's when I know it's it's hot enough so I'll let these dry set up the torch and anneal this coin all right I think I've got a pretty decent shot here to show you what we're going to do next we've got our marker all nice and dry and we're just going to grab our handy little needle nose pliers <coughs> excuse me grab onto our coin and heat it up until the marks disappear you want to kind of keep moving it around in the flame you can evenly heat it up so it doesn't get super heated in some places and not so heated in others keep it moving around Quench it. Nice. Quench your tools too. They get hot as well. Alright. Now I'll just dry this off and get ready to fold it. Alright, so the next step is going to be our first fold. And I've got this uh, specific die that, that fits uh, $1 coins quite well. So that's what I'm going to be using. I haven't actually used this die for this purpose before, so I'm going to try and be really careful and uh, try and make sure I fold it as evenly as I can. And I'm even going to use this, uh, this wooden cone to do it so we don't tear anything up. Make sure we've got everything nice and lined up. And that's about as far as I'm going to fold it. I'm going to re-anneal this and come back and fold it some more. It does look like I got a little off center while pushing this and it stuck onto this folding cone pretty good. So I may have pushed it a little further than I should have. Uh, but I'm still going to pop it off of here, re-anneal it, and fold it some more. Alright, so we've got our coin re-annealed, so it should be a little softer. We should be able to push it a little bit further and hopefully even up the, the little bit of off-centeredness we got. I'm going to be using the metal uh, folding cone this time. Should have stuck with that the first time. And I think that's a pretty decent fold there. Looks pretty good and even to me. So I'm going to go ahead and re-anneal this again and uh, move over to the ring stretcher. So I did re-anneal the coin and I took another look at it in this die. And if you look at it from the bottom, there's still a little bit of a gap where that shadow is. So I'm going to go ahead and push it just a little bit further in here before I move to the ring stretcher. Feels like about as far as I can go with it in there. It's a pretty good looking shape. Alright, I am gonna re-anneal this again just to be safe, and then we'll move to the ring stretcher. Or maybe well it's supposed to be a size 14. So let's see what it's at right now. Okay. Not quite a 14, we're about 12 and a half, so we will need to stretch this out. Anneal it and set up the camera for stretching. But before I do that, let's let's take a look at it. Let's 
see how it's looking so far. I've been able to keep the detail on it very nice. Sorry, I'm a little shaky. You can see where the cone kind of uh, came in contact with it. the fire scale, but it doesn't seem like it, it damaged any of the detail of the coin. All right, so I'm gonna re-anneal this and stretch it out. All right, so we've got our coin freshly annealed and I sanded this cut edge and double checked for any kind of uh, cracks or scratches. It's nice and smooth. Uh, what we're gonna do next is take a little bit of blue shop towel, like paper towel. This is something new I'm doing to preserve the inside detail of the coins. It works quite well. And basically you just wrap this around couple times like I said I'm still new with it so I'm still trying to figure it out but I pull the paper towel up over the end of the ring stretcher sorry you guys can't see what I'm doing and then uh, pull it down flush with the coin like that and we're just gonna stretch this out until I start feeling any kind of uh, weird resistance and we'll anneal it again I think that's that's pretty good. I'll go anneal it again. Check the size where we're at. Like I said, our our key size is a 14, so we're past a 14. So we won't have to stretch this anymore. Uh, from here, we'll be working with the Swedish wrap to reduce this down. So I'll let you get a good look at the coin so far getting a very nice shape still has a lot of very nice detail and I'm just gonna anneal this again and be right back all right so here is our freshly annealed halfway coin ring you can see the detail on this is just keeping so nice I'm really impressed with myself on this so far I hope I don't mess it up uh, the next step is gonna be to wrap this in plumber's tape and send it down the Swedish wrap. So I'm gonna wrap this in tape real quick and I'll be right back. All right, so I wrapped this 15 times in uh, plumber's tape and I'm just gonna pop it in my Swedish wrap here. Try and get it nice and even in there, nice and flat. There we go. Here's a look at it. I'm gonna go find the pusher for this. It's always a tight squeeze under this arbor press for the Swedish wrap. So I've worked it down about a third of the way Go ahead and pop it out here, take a look at it. Get more ring shaped, very nice. I'm gonna go ahead and re-anneal this again, tape it up, and probably push it a little more. All right, Oop. we've got our coin re-annealed and taped, and we're gonna send it a little further down the Swedish wrap. Make sure we got it as nice and even as possible. Pusher on top there. And now we're about halfway down the Swedish wrap. Check and see how well this pusher will line up on there. See if we can send it just a little bit further. Right. Pop 
pop it out of there. Getting a very nice shape on this. Sorry, I'm still not the best at taking tape off of a ring. So bear with me just a second while I struggle to remove this tape. So I can show you what the ring looks like. still over a size 14 so we can continue to reduce this down so I'm going to re-anneal it again and put it back in the Swedish wrap so here is our freshly annealed coin ring so far um, before I annealed it I did deburr this edge right here because it makes the ring quite uncomfortable so you can see that dark silver spot that's where I deburred, and that's also going to remove some of the material that's fighting for space as we reduce this, so it'll make it a little easier to reduce. I'm going to go ahead and tape this up again and throw it back in the Swedish wrap. Alright, so we've got our ring all wrapped up in tape again. We're going to throw it in our Swedish wrap, make sure it's nice and even and level in here. We're going to start with this pusher and then work down to the next size. It's about as far as that one wants to go. That one seems about right there. We're pretty close to the bottom on this, so I'm going to take it out and check our ring size. Alright, so we actually got above a size 14, so we can uh, re-anneal this, throw it on the ring stretcher, and that should even up the shape a bit. And we can just work our way up to a size 14. Very nice. Now, I have used uh, brass pushers in the past, and these plastic ones are really growing on me because with the brass, one, the brass ones, I always end up with gouges or dents on the top of the coin, and this is just, it's so clean. Now, the plastic ones are more fragile, and you gotta be more careful. Uh, as you can see, I've kind of chipped the bottom of this one a little bit, but it's still working for me pretty good. Uh, so I'm going to take the tape off of this and re-anneal it, and then we'll go over to the ring stretcher, and I'll show you what it looks like. This tape is it's tough. Alright, so here's our freshly annealed coin ring, looking very nice. I went ahead and removed a little bit more of this lips material, so it's just even with the rest of the ring now, and actually quite comfortable and smooth. So I'm going to set up my camera so we can stretch this out a little bit and get up to size 14. Alright, so we're over at the ring stretcher again. We've got our freshly annealed coin. we got a little bit of blue paper towel here that we're going to wrap around where we're going to stretch the coin. And we're really not going to have to stretch this too far. We're just trying to shape it up and get it down to that size 14. Size. We're getting pretty close, just above it. I feel like I may actually have to flip this over and stretch it this way just a little bit.
cut right through that paper towel. You see that? size one more time should be getting pretty close still not quite a size 14 flip it over again stretch the reed side a little bit size one more time still just above a size 14 so we can stretch a little bit more sorry if this part's a little boring I just want to make sure I get this right I don't want to mess it up so I'm going to take my time. Three good pulls each way. We should be there. right at a 14 perfect now I'm gonna go ahead and get in touch with the person whose ring this is and see if they like this shape or if they want me to try and straighten it out a little bit more so I think I can uh, but I really want to see what they think so I'll be right back well here's our giant coin ring so far uh, it's the correct size, but it's not quite even. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stretch it out a little bit and then reduce it and try and straighten these walls up. Hopefully I don't mess it up because I really like So I decided to stretch a little further. We got it to about a size 15. And now I'm going to go ahead and reduce it and try and straighten these walls up. <laughs> 